friends we have discussed folds and faults fold is a kind of different deformation plastic stage fault is a ruptural stage deformation in case of fault what happens we know there is a dislocation movement but many a cases this kind of dislocation movement may not take place in other words it is a ruptural stage deformation but the movement of the block is not relative it is away from the plane away from the plane of a fracture this kind of deformation we call joints and fractures they also influence our site condition affect the strength of the rocks and create problems what exactly they are what are their types their genesis how they do influence we shall discuss now joint is another just now i said see this beautiful photograph this kind of joints developed on the rock surface these are fractures found in all types of rocks there are cracks or opening formed in the rocks presence of joints divides this if this is a joint they divide if this is a joint they divide this is the joint this divide that divide the rocks into smaller and smaller blocks they are similar to cleavages but the spacing may be little apart in case of joints whereas in cleavage it is much closer they occur oriented in a definite direction you see they are all oriented 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 or either this 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 they are not haphazard similar to the cleavage they are all oriented joints and cracks are oriented similar to cleavage not necessarily they can also be non oriented but majority of the cases they do show orientation yes no fractures or cracks in rocks where no relative displacement has taken place that we know the extent of this may be millimeter to few meter in length but quite but quite prominent and extend for considerable depth and thickness in the sense their length can be 100 not kilometers together of course not like faults maximum say 100 meter but few centimeter to meter is a common as per the depth of penetration is concerned they may extend up to few often hundreds of meter depth as well faults can extend far deep far long in all respect joints are similar to faults but no relative displacement is one second their extension magnitude that is both in terms of depth or in terms of length they are not that high but in number they can be maximum per kilometer or per unit area the occurrence may be very high they may be straight or curved regular or irregular pattern general they are parallel they may occur in groups and then if they occur parallel to each other and form a group we call them a joint set two or more joint set form a joint system for example in this case these 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 are all one set of joints this is another set of joints this is another set of joints see there are there are joint system one set of joints second set of joint there are different set of joints they define the system yes now their special relationship based on that we can classify them we can classify them based on the geometry this classification is essentially important to communicate to a lab engineer or 
site engineer and in the design engineer who is sitting in the office. One has to communicate to the other fellow. A field engineer says this is the type of joint and he says based on their geometry or based on spatial relationship, it helps us to understand better for the design engineer in the office. Therefore, we have to follow certain specific classification method which help us to communicate and hence the further uh, design aspect, further precaution, etc. he can take. Therefore, we try to classify the joints based on either their spatial relationship or a geometry. Now, there may be systematic joints, joints with a distinct regularity possible. Example, mural joints, columnar joints, they have a definite regular pattern. For example, here you have a set of joint in three dimension. This is one more set of joint. There can be one more set of joints like this. Now, these are regular pattern and not necessary regular pattern. For example, in this case, you find these are not regular, irregular. There is a systematic joint. These are, but these are non-systematic joints. These non-systematic, they do not have regular pattern. The important message is important. If it is a irregular, difficult to treat them, but they are confined to shallow depth. Whereas, if it is a systematic, they can penetrate deeper also. Therefore, the moment you say type of joint, the design engineer can easily understand. Now, these are based on the spatial relationship. Now, based on the geometry, strike joints, strike joints are parallel to strike of the regional structure or bedding plane. Example, if I have a rock like this, in third dimension, I am drawing, these are the different layers of rocks, then joints may be like this. They are cutting the strike direction perpendicular or oblique and such kind of joints are not parallel to strike. On the other hand, here joints may be, if this is a layer of rocks, this is a strike, there we may have a joint. The joints which are parallel to strike, we can call them joint strike joints. There may be joints parallel to dip direction, we can call them dip joints and there may be a kind of joint which are neither parallel to the strike. For example, this is the bedding plane, these are the strike, there they are like this, neither parallel like this, not parallel to this, they are oriented in a different these are oblique joints. They may be like this. There are oblique joints. We are trying to classify them with respect to the mode of this joint. We have strike joints like this, dip joints like this, oblique joints like this. When I say dip joints, there is two types of, again, category. This is a joint. Joint also has a orientation. The strike of the joint is parallel to the strike, deep of the joint parallel to deep of the bed, then it is called a kind of deep joints, bedding joints. Only dip is parallel, but not strike is far parallel. What we mean to say is this is the If this is the strike of the bed, strike of the bed, joints may have like this, but they are, they may be like this, they may be like this, they may, 
we like this. They are not parallel to strike, only parallel to dip, dip joints. But here this which I am showing is different. If this is the strike, there are certain joints which are parallel and their strikes are also parallel to strike. Then these are different type of joints. Now bedding joint is one thing which is perfectly parallel to the bedding plane as well as their strike. In the photograph, I have shown they are all horizontal beds. Here they are inclined beds. These bedding joints are those type of joints which are means the joint planes are parallel to deep of the beds. Joint orientation is parallel to strike. Then they are perfectly parallel to strike and deep. They are they are called bedding joints. But here I have shown is they are parallel to the bedding planes. So they are bedding joints. Now these are all systematic. But here one more type of joint. You see. Now these are all columnar structure found in the basalts of Maharashtra. These are beautiful but regular pattern. How nicely see. Another, this is from St. Mary's Island. You see all the joints are of regular polygonal like this, like this, like this. They are all regular polygonal structure. Here also they are oriented here you see the joint depth so much like this. Here you see, here you see these are columnar structure defined by the joint and their regular joint pattern. More beautiful in some Maharashtra dikes like a columnar St. Mary's Island, etc. These are all from and such beautiful regular patterns they develop. So we have the joints irregular, joints regular, they can be described with respect to regional structure, parallel to strike, parallel to dip, both strike and dip, parallel to bedding joints, parallel to bedding plane, oblique joints like that. And the, then the columnar structures which are again a regular pattern. And there are some irregular joint patterns like this, a drying mud, if a river, uh, sorry, pond or a lake dries, often they do exhibit, otherwise they irregular mud cracks like these kind of structures are not, they are regular. This is also another irregular, this I have shown photograph while explaining post action. Yes, the joints can be regular or irregular pattern. Then difficult to communicate. How do you communicate? Just we can say they are irregular joints. If it were F regular, you say columnar joint, bedding joint, strike joint, design engineer easily understands. Then what is their possible depth, etc. This perhaps do not extend beyond say meter depth generally. Now, how these joints are formed? Something related to the classification and formation, yes. Now, contraction during formation. Sedimentary rocks which are rich in moisture undergo contraction as it dries up. Just now I gave the example of a lake dried lake bed you see mud cracks you find. It is because of contraction as moisture escapes, dries up. Igneous rocks like just now I have shown these are igneous rocks their pattern is so regular. During cooling, there are centers of cooling or solidification, crystallization and the ion or elements move towards center of crystallization and elements move this way, they move this way, a kind of tensional force is developed. What I mean to say, we have one center, another center, another center, elements move, elements move, elements move, elements move. Elements move. Therefore, there is a kind of tensional force and they move this way, this way and a regular pattern of joints are developed. So, 
the igneous rock during cooling give rise to tensile stresses which cause joints expansion and contraction during mechanical weathering alternate heating and thawing we have discussed spheroidal weathering exfoliation they also give rise to pressure release we have discussed during the earlier session they also give rise to therefore they give another pattern is alternate heating and thawing effect also develop a cracks and these are all common and this irregular joint pattern result they develop in a regular pattern this kind so what we mean to say contraction and tensile forces result in joint formation when beds are folded like this a tensional force a tensional force here here develop but forces here here they may experience here and here then there may be some kind of fractures result that is different thus tensional forces when beds are folded into anticline when beds are folded into syncline compressive forces and in the limb part there is a different type of force then depending on this in different parts of a rock bed we have different type of joints example here we have tensional joints here we have compressional joints here we have shear joints etc joints can be of any depending on in which part of the rock bed they occur and the type of force responsible for formation joints are too small they can be a few centimeter they are classified with respect to the direction in which they lie now i have to describe this. these are two small joints north south set north northeast set east west set i can say the orientation this is one north west so i set these are north east set like that this is a east west set like different sets i can explain with respect to the orientation of those yes now we had a rock on which there was a soil cover like that during weathering if the soil is removed then we find this kind of joint that is a removal of overburden in a sedimentary rocks releases the stress load on them and joints are developed this is a case of sedimentary rock release of load this is one type of pressure joints another type is a crustal disturbance due to tectonic adjustment that is movement of plates we have said this is one plate this another plate they may move like this or they may move like this then a different set of joint patterns develop tensional joints pressure contraction compression then tectonic movement also responsible for some kind sudden seismic shock waves also cause joints then there are different causes for disturbances see this beautiful photo now mural joint it is also called often cuboidal joints just now we have seen if see there is a one set of a joint sheet joint plate joint you can call there is another set of a joint there is another set of joints as a result cubical block like this we get get cubical blocks like it means there are three direction of joints mutually perpendicular more or less of equidistant then cube like cuboidal mural joints people 
define it. These are common in plutonic igneous, massive igneous rocks. They consist of equally spaced, mutually perpendicular joints. They are all produced during solidification of magma, which suffer contraction due to cooling effect. This kind of joints are more regular and they have regular spacing, then it becomes easy to understand the extent and depth, etc. Sheet exfoliation, just now I have, this is a sheet. If jointing pattern, joint pattern, sheet like, if they are oriented, a plate like. So, these are all again due to removal of the load, tensional. Sheeting is a tensional due to release of loading, either due to erosion or some other means. Release of the compressional force on rocks that have been under high confining pressure, sometimes causes rupture, perpendicular axis of compression. Then we have this kind of release of load pressure on them result in this kind of joint pattern. Now you see sheets, this kind of joints you have seen commonly in road cutting etc. No. Columnar joint, I have shown the St. Mary's Island beautiful column like structure when molten lava cools and solidifies enormous thermal contraction take place and a strain is developed beyond the elastic limit of the solidified rocks, thus forming a series of cracks perpendicular to the direction of stress, movement of materials, making an angle of 120 to each other. Generally, this kind of structures are developed. If the cooling is not exactly uniform, the blocks may be irregular in outline. If they are regular like this, 120, 120, like the column or structure which I have shown. But if it is irregular, then th this is possible. So, depends on how cooling is uniform, we have different type of joint pattern. Yes, this is another beautiful we have. This is California, see, and sorry, this one, and this is in Scotland. Again, so beautiful columnar structure, similar to what we have St. Mary's Island, but these are little inclined in St. Mary's Island. They are perfectly vertical here. The columns are little thinner. St. Mary's Island, beautiful pillar like, such a wonderful. So, such kind of structures, joint patterns are developed. You see from this photograph what is the depth of the joint penetration. Depth of joint penetration enormous can be several. Whereas I have shown crack, crack like this, this cannot be deeper or mud cracks I have shown that can extend at the most a meter maximum, but not several meter like this. Means, what is the message? If a joint patterns are regular, it can be deeper penetration. If they are irregular, perhaps they may not penetrate beyond certain depth. Simple message, I can get rid of this by excavation and remove that if it is an irregular joint. If it is a regular joint, I have a different message. That for example, for example, if this is the case, yes, if this is the case, I can inject the cement slurry. I can inject cement slurry that flows all around. If I inject that flows all around, I can seal those joints. Means when joint patterns are regular, although they penetrate deep, it is also possible to take precaution by rock bolting, rock jointing, etc. What is rock bolting, rock jointing? For ex I will explain. For example, this is the hill slope. I have the rocks like this. These are joint, joints, joints like this. 
joints like that. Now rock bolting is a method by which I artificially drill like this and nail like nailing to the wall we know then I a cement rod or like that then a nut like arrangement I stop then if this block has to slide it has to drag this one also because it is got attached. I have nailed this also. If this block has to slide, it should drag this, it should drag this. I have done like this, I have done made like this. If there are several such nailing, bolting, rock bolting, jointed, I have joined this one and this one, this one and this one, this one and this one, this one, this one. Therefore, if any single block has to slide, it has to drag this, it has to drag this, it has to drag this, drag this. Such an enormous force cannot be. And therefore, the each joint block holds the other block in place tightly. Therefore, there is no chance of a sliding. Example, example, super dam site, that is a Sykes point. We have this is the Sykes point near a few kilometers from the Ambikanagar, Dandeli, and we have the Nagzari powerhouse here, underground powerhouse. Here, the, these rocks are highly jointed, jointed, jointed. There, they have done rock bolting, rock jointing, grouting, etc. Now, I take a, one minute to tell the story. Before the construction of those Nagzari powerhouse and Kali project, and they were stabilizing these joints by grouting. Grouting is nothing but a cement slurry injected. We also add other materials for quick setting, like what we add gypsum, etc. Now, they add some suitable chemical mix to cement and make it a slurry inject with the pressure and pump it, that cement slurry flows, flows here all around and fills those joint planes. And they quickly uh, harden, get hardened and therefore henceforth cracks are filled, no more percolation and that also binds the neighboring blocks, therefore they are well cemented. Now, but Initially what they have done, they have pumped several tons of cement slurry into the ground and they reported in their diary that 50 tons of cement slurry is injected. But a villager the next day came and said, Sir, in the river so much of cement is flowing. What happened to your cement bag? Check. And they got shocked why cement is flowing in there and they found that yesterday they have pumped so much of cement injected and it is flowing. They later realized that there was a huge crack. They have pumped cement slurry through the crack it reached the river bed it is flowing. Therefore then they took up this rock bolting, rock jointing, grouting simultaneously. Yes. Thus, when the joint patterns are regular, it is easy to understand this kind. If joint patterns are not regular, then, then the problem arises. Therefore, that kind of classification is important. Now, yes. if the cooling is not exactly uniform, zigzag pattern take place, this, this kind of joint can penetrate to deeper level and this is another setup. In a, uh, Navil Tirtha Gauch, if you see such beautiful bedding planes, horizontal, jointed like this, as the sediment become more and more consolidated under pressure, it gets compressed and occupies smaller volume and finally, if you press it further, it can rupture. If you do not press it further, and then if you release the pressure, it can develop a joint. Both can happen.
develop prominently in massive as well as bedded sedimentary rock. This is a bedded sedimentary rock. Then. So, those rock which have more or less uniform grain size, these are called master joints as it is spaced regularly in sedimentary rock. They are regular, regular, regular. Typical of a sediment sandstone and a limestone, which consists of three sets of mutually perpendicular to each other. Just now I have mentioned Navil Tirth Gorge, Navil Tirth Dam site, and elsewhere also in sedimentary rock, these are common. Since folding and faulting is common in sedimentary rocks, strike and dip of these, say, it is not visible. Anyway. We need to study their strike and dip. They also exhibit specific pattern. Then if a joints have a regular pattern, it becomes easy to manage, but the depth of penetration is high. That is the message. Now, you see, joints in metamorphic rock. In a different type of rock, it is pattern is different. We have said in igneous rock, mural joints, columnar structures are developed. In previous, that we have some, these are sedimentary rock, joints in sedimentary rock, they have another pattern. In metamorphic rock, the pattern is again different. Means it depending on the type of rock, joint patterns are also different. If the field engineer says, sir, joints are like oriented like this, it is schistous rock. Yes, a good engineer can understand what is the schist, what is the joint pattern, what is the relationship, etc. Thus, this type of classification and knowledge is helpful. In case of metamorphic rock, the joint pattern depends on the nature and intensity of metamorphism. We have low-grade metamorphic rock like slate and phyllite, moderately higher schistose, we call green schist phases of rocks. At that level of metamorphism, rocks behave like brittle material and they develop a kind of a joint. So, knees, a high grade metamorphic rock like joints pattern if different. So, maybe partially retain the joint pattern of the parent rock at a low grade metamorphic rock. High grade, they may lose those parent character. Massive rocks like knees issue, mural and sheet joint. Those are characteristic of igneous rocks. Granite knees often show the parent rock like mural joints, whereas bedded and foliated rocks, marble, quartzite show master joints as they were in sedimentary rock, bedded like similar structure they also show when they are metamorphosed. Mean to say, they do inherit some parent rock's character, therefore some the joint pattern also follow that of their parent rock like igneous or metamorphic or sedimentary. Plus in addition, metamorphic condition, they develop schistosity, cleavage, another set, they are all regular. So, there is a possibility of superposition of joints in metamorphic rock, means different joint type, some belong related to parent rock, some due to metamorphic condition they have developed like during metamorphism. This people do classify based on the relative attitude of the joint, that is a different type pattern. When the joints are pallet to strike and dip up the adjacent beds, they are called strike joints, dip joints, respectively we have already said, if the strike direction of the joint is pallet, neither to the strike nor to the dip, we have called them as oblique joints. If the strike direction, dip direction and dip amount coincide completely with that of the beds, we call bedding joints, we have already said. Now, classification further depends on their origin. Now here, this is the axis of the fold. These are tensional joints and there are some joint pattern parallel to bedding plane we call dip joints. That is 
dip of the bedding plane and there are some joints shear joints they are oblique these are oblique there are depends on the where they present what is the force behind them they show different type of joint patterns now depends on the compression force here if the joints develop then if they are here they tensional here they are all bedding joints or dip joints here they are all oblique joints depends on where they occur with respect to the bedding plane and the force we have different type of joints this is another important pattern if i have to take care of this i have to take care of these oblique joints i have to take care of these dip joints a different approach i have to follow and these are all oriented in some direction and therefore our precaution to take about the joints in our site construction site depends on this pattern so the advantage there are disadvantages of joints Yes, so joints influence squaring and blasting pattern. Easy to excavate them because of the joints. Excavation is faster. Advantages, but often if joint blocks are too close facing, it is difficult to get the required size of the material. If I want a um, for masonry work, you block. then if joint spacing is so close small aggregate like yes fine therefore the spacing of joint is something important and is useful in quarrying purpose they may be favorable they may render the rock useless i have to carve a beautiful monumental like shavana balagula gomteshwara presence of joint render the rock useless so rock become not suitable for some specific purposes huge blocks of rock if they are jointed i cannot use them for flooring polishing etc decorative purpose therefore joints often disqualify the rock for many applications in the field they may have be helpful for quarry mural and master joints help quarrying intact cubical blocks we can remove dimension stones possible sheet joints help obtaining a crushed stone for concrete aggregate etc we can easily cut for road railway ballast etc joints control the natural ground water drainage system in rocks underground presence of joints water can percolate and get recharged into the ground advantages joints often improve passage or provide passage for the ground water rise also it is not just percolation along that water table may rise up from depth to the surface and surface so or issue out to the surface and form the springs they may rise to the surface and springs can also be formed thus joints may have some favorable joint planes or provide a potential depositional channel for mineralizing solution hydrothermal solution is study sorry we have mentioned in previous session and when that solution come to the surface they bring metals in dissolved form when they come to the shallow depth or surface they may interact with the rock or atmosphere they may deposit therefore they are the pathways for mineral containing fluid come to the surface where mineralization can take place or water can percolate through them etc joints are helpful in exploration for water locating well sites all engineers those who are interested in searching for ground water they look for joints just now we have said joints render the rock weak and unstable useless so joint planes form 
स्लोप प्लेन्स इन इनक्लाइंड एंड फोल्डेड बेड्स देर फॉर लैंड स्लाइड्स आर पॉसिबल जस्ट नाउ हैव कोटेड द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द साइक्स पॉइंट अंबिका नगर नागजेरी पावर हाउस इज द फेयर लैंड स्लाइड्स आर फॉर्म जॉइंट्स रेंडर रॉकी बैंक्स ऑफ रिवर्स अनफिट वी मे हैव ए रिवर एंड वी विश टू कंस्ट्रक्ट ए डैम एंड स्टोर वाटर बट इफ द जॉइंट्स आर देयर अगेन द सी पेज ऑफ वाटर टेक प्लेस लॉस ऑफ वाटर फ्रॉम द रिजर्व वायर टेक प्लेस सो वाटर टाइट रिजर्व वायर वी कैनॉट गेट बिकॉज ऑफ प्रेजेंस ऑफ द जॉइंट्स so in the dam abutments if the jointed rocks are there it is a severe weakness joint planes are responsible for leakage of water in the tunnel we know loss of water leakage from the reservoir that is another from the dam abutment that is another beneath the dam that is another so everywhere the joints in the construction site create one or the other problem and that is considered as a weakness yes this is another kind of although we feel there ca- there is a kind of a joint like here or here but the formation is something different we call it unconformity t t i t y unconformity so we have different type of a structure here it is not similar to that of folds faults joint we do find some combination like structures here but they are not their formation process is something different and it differently affect our civil engineering projects this is another kind of structure we have to be careful about this what is unconformity if the layers are deposited as bedding plane without any interruption layer 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 it is a conformable continuous unconformities are the place of discontinuity that is we have layer of layer layer of rocks after some period there may not be any deposition any deposition some period of gap during that gap what may happen there is only two process either above the land there should be either deposition all the take place below water above the water ta- water that is a uh, sea or whatever we have always erosion at the most there is no deposition no erosion so deposition is also a kind of formation of set of rocks a kind of events record erosion is something a loss of a record we can say then your unconformities are the planes of discontinuity there is a set of formation a kind of gap again one more set of rock may be developed this period correspond to unconformity unconformity can also be defined as period of non deposition period of erosion that's also unconformity younger beds are most of the time sedimentary in origin older rocks may be metamorphic sedimentary igneous all possible how this have found there was a deposition then where the deposition takes place below water means if it is under water this layers are deposited after some period deposition is stopped when happens either deposited material reaches the sea level there cannot be further deposition deposition ceases after some period sea bottom may collapse sea level may rise then there is a space for sedimentation and then there can be sedimentation but in between there was no deposition there was a gap in the depositional process that is unconfirmed 
often what happens after the till the deposition without there is any time gap this area may be uplifted if the rocks are brought above the sea level they can undergo erosion after some period of erosion there may be collapse again now the situation is rocks are below sea level again once again there can be deposition these layers correspond to this there was some period of erosion then that erosion is indicated by uneven surface at rocks were exposed to atmosphere they have undergone weathering weathering often produces a soil layer we may find on that soil layer again one more set of rocks may be deposited between the layers of rock we do have a residual weathered soil yes that's has an unconformity tectonic activity is responsible for uplift or subsidence is through the tectonic activity so what are the factors required there should be a deposition there should be uplift or subsidence to happen that tectonic activity is required once again there should be an erosion then once again there should be deposition these are the activities required for formation of unconformity i give some simple example a boy has attended our class from first 10 days regularly say due to some reason he did not attend 11th 12th and 13th classes say again from 14th class onwards he is a regular whatever the things that are taught in the class that were all recorded in his notebook first day second day third day fourth day like that and he has also put a date of these are the dates on which what is taught and 11th 12th 13th lectures he was absent 14th lectures onwards he was present after 100 years 50 years or 200 years if anybody can see that notebook what he will see yes this boy was a regular to first 10 class then he missed so many classes and then he present for so many other classes that gap indicates that is a kind of record no that is a kind of record in which no notes were recorded non a period of non record formation similar nature a period in which no deposition has taken place if i see there are two three possibilities perhaps those pages were torn that's also possible a loss of record is also possible unconfirmed is exactly similar a formation of records then a gap in the formation of records or loss of record then continuation or formation of record unconfirmity in a way is a kind of record formation and that is important to understand what has happened in the earth history friends i take little more time now carefully listen what has suppose this is the basin this is the sea level i have a layers of rocks formed first thing deposition has taken place if erosion has to take place and non deposition has to take place the first event is the deposition second event is either non deposition or erosion has to take place means there should be tectonic activity that is if this layer is uplifted above sea level then there is a possibility of erosion or up to sea level there is no period of deposition second is the tectonic history if it is above sea level obviously erosion take place up to sea level beyond that nothing happened nothing but once again there is a tectonic activity subsidence may take place again area goes below the sea level down some space is created again sedimentation take place but all these take place below water but today i am able to see them means 
they are all above the ground. It means uplift again. So many stages are involved. What it means, there was a basin, there was a deposition, uplifted and in undergone erosion, once again subsidence, there was a deposition, once again uplift and they are exposed. It means land is frequently subjected to vertical movement. Possibility? Either sea level changes or land moves, whatever. There is or there was a kind of repeated a tectonic movement. Therefore, unconformity is a signboard of sensitive tectonic or earth part. Some repeated tectonic movement has taken place. Yes, beautiful. What do you see here? You see folds? Yes. You see what here, here, a clay and soft beds, weathered soil you find? Yes. Only this much? Yes. So, so there are faults. There there is this part is like this and this is and these rocks are like this like this and here the rocks are like this and there is fault etc all this fold faults unconformity how do we say this is unconformity yes unconformity if present we will able to understand them shortly. Rocks below and above are of a different type. Then, and they may have a different orientation, they may have a different nature, all these are possible indication of unconformity. We will try to understand them little later. But at this stage, when I said unconformity, what is its importance for an engineer? It acts as weaker zone because within the unconformity there are weathered soil. Therefore, that soil zone is a weakness. It may allow water to percolate. Therefore, possibility that unconformity means weakness. I give a small example here. We have the Lakia Dam and it is like this, the hills are like this and there was an unconformity layer during monsoon when the Lakia Dam was full, this weathered layer got submerged, means here there was seepage of water possible through this weeping and this entire hill must have slided down in 1986, Lakia Dam failure we call collapse. And entire part of this water plus hill mass slided and damaged the low lying area in the surrounding villages. See, this is because of unconformity. Super Dam, again, the rocks here are so foliated. During rainy season, again heavy rain, if water rises, this also get saturated because of rain and the reservoir also form, then there is a seepage, heavy seepage and collapse of this land. So they had to take severe precaution that within one season, before rainy season comes, they have to complete everything and seal those some kind of engineering challenges they provide. So, behavior of the rocks above and below the unconformity will have a different mechanical property, hence affect the stability of the project. Valuable deposit like petroleum, mineral like gold, uranium, Deshnur formation near Balagam, we have unconformity along with that, we have uranium. Windian mountain, several unconformities are there. All along the unconformity, we have the diamond. Means unconformity is the place where gold, diamond, uranium mineral can deposit. And that is the interest of 
every geologist like even oil major structures like multi story building if present has to construct i have to look for unconfirmity carefully because the foundation below that it may affect dam tunnel bridges i have to seriously investigate for presence or absence of uh, unconfirmity yes in ground water they are useful therefore we discuss them little detail now these are all the projects where unconfirmities presence or absence matters we shall discuss them little more detail